All right. So the last thing in section 5.2 that we should talk about um, is a little bit of calculator stuff that I'm going to tie into uh, solving a right triangle. Solving a right triangle just means sort of finding all the different values, angle values, and like side lengths. Um, the Pythagorean theorem, of course, allows us to sort of get all three side lengths, but it doesn't necessarily tell us anything about the, the angle values. Um, so we're going to introduce uh, a couple sort of calculator operations to help us sort of like fill in the gaps here. Um, so let's just sort of take a generic triangle. I know I sort of, in some sense, keep drawing essentially the same triangle, but, uh, but that's okay. So let's say maybe this length down here is like 8.5. So let's say this angle um, you know, it looks, let's say it's like 35 degrees, the angle on here. Um, and what we'd like to do is find the length x. So this is sort of Pythagorean-ish, right? Um, we have kind of one of these lengths, but to do the Pythagorean theorem, we really sort of need, by definition, two of the three, and then we can kind of find the third. We've only got one. We do have one piece of information that we didn't have in those Pythagorean theorem problems, which is we do know one of the angles. Um, it's not necessarily super helpful for this problem, but what we could say, right, the third angle should be 90 degrees minus this 35 would be 55 degrees. So in theory, we, we could sort of throw that up here. That's not necessarily going to help, but it is information we could find. Um, if we were trying to sort of find everything here, we would obviously need to know that as, a, as, as one step. Um, but to get this x, um, we're going to have to do something else. So let's look at this from the perspective of angle 35. Our hypotenuse is up here. That's not something we're asked for. Um, the opposite, this side length x, is the opposite side, and then this 8.5 is the adjacent. So um, if we start to try to do some trigonometry type setups, right, you know, kind of what do we have that's going to relate an angle value and a side length, it's got to be trig stuff. And so in particular, what we're looking at here is the side we know, which is the adjacent, and then the side we're trying to solve for, which is the x, which is the opposite. So which of our trig functions uses the opposite and the adjacent? And the answer is the tangent function, right? So tangent at 35, if that's our perspective angle, um, is going to equal this opposite over the adjacent. And so then for us, that would be the sort of the value x over this length, 8.5. And so this is the point where we say, OK, so in theory, right, I, I kind of have you know, tangent of 35 degrees is x over 8.5. Um, if I knew what this, like, fraction value was, if I knew what the tangent of 35 was, I, I could really do something here, right? Because then I'd kind of have a number. I have a number here, and I just have this one variable. Um, we don't have a special triangle for 35, right? So what we're going to do is we're going to use calculator to find the tangent at 35 degrees. So we'll be able to solve for, with those special triangles, a handful of semi-decent angle values, right? 30s, 60s, 90s, 45s, and sort of the, the other versions of those uh, values. 35 is not particularly one of those. We don't have some sort of special triangle that, that goes with 35. So the tool that we're going to use here is a calculator. We don't use them a lot, um, almost never, um, but this is a case where we would need it. So what we're going to do uh, is make sure that we're in degrees mode. So in this sort of a scientific calculator, right, you have degrees and radians, and then uh, gradients, I think, is the third one. So we just want to make sure we'll, we'll hit one here to make sure we're in degrees, because the angle is in degrees. And we're just going to do tangent of 35, and it should kick us out. So 0 0.700207. We'll call that 0.7, right? That's extremely reasonable to just call that 0.7. And so that's the value we can use in this problem. So we can say tangent 35 is 0 
So that means I can set up. So then this kind of becomes 0 0.7 equals x over 8.5. And so then to get to the x, I would just do like cross multiply. So I'm going to have 0 0.7 times the 8.5 is equal to x. Um, and I'll use this rounded version here instead of using my, uh, my, my calculator version. So I'll say 0 0.7 times 8.5. We could do this on paper, but just to save time. So that's going to be 5.95. So our value here for x is 5.95. So we can kind of leverage that value, right? So using our calculator, we can find trig values at particular angles. Um, if we wanted to do a radian angle, you just would need to change your calculator into radian mode. Um, and you could do the exact same thing. If you're doing a story problem or something, probably you're not going to get an angle in radians, but you know, who knows? There's lots of different uh, setups out there in the world. Let's do a second one. So let's find a missing angle value. Um, I'll change our drawing just a little bit. So let's find the missing angle value theta. Um, I'll play with the perspective. Let's maybe put the theta up there. Um, to find a missing angle value, um, we're going to need to know two of the three side lengths. Um, if we know two of them, in theory, we can sort of find the third. Um, let's say maybe, so this would be our kind of opposite. Let's say this is what? Six. Um, and let's say this is like 8.9. I'm kind of just trying to eyeball these, right? Um, I could, in a pinch, do Pythagorean theorem and find the third side length over here. Um, we're not really asking for it. We're trying to solve for this x. From that, I'm sorry, for this theta. From that perspective, the side length 6 would be the opposite, would be across. And then this 8.9, of course, as always, is the hypotenuse, the long side. So how can I relate all this information together? How can I relate the angle value in these two side lengths? In particular, of course, this is the opposite and the hypotenuse. And so hopefully what comes to your mind first is that the sine of the angle should be the opposite over the hypotenuse. So the sine of theta is going to be 6 over... 8.9, right? So we're not really doing Pythagorean theorem stuff. We could do a quick division, again, kind of just on the calculator to maybe get a decimal value there. Um, so let's do 6 divided by 8.9. So 0 0.67415, we'll call that 0 0.67. So what I've got here sine of theta is 0 0.67. So, okay, that's something, but that's not the actual angle value itself, right? The whole idea here is, as I said, I was trying to actually solve for this angle. Um, and so what we'll sort of introduce here briefly from a calculated perspective, and then we'll sort of revisit um, in section 5.7 is the idea of uh, an inverse function. So inverse right means reverse. And so what it's going to look like is so sine inverse. Sometimes it's called uh, or is written arc sine. Um, on the calculator, what it's usually going to look like is sine inverse. So sine with a little minus one. That's not the best <laughs> notation in the world, right? Because of course, negative one as an exponent means one over that value, which would be the reciprocal, which would be cosecant. Um, so, so you can see why maybe sometimes people use arc sine instead because uh, sine inverse is one over sine is, looks like one over sine, which would be cosecant, which is not an inverse function. Um, so sine inverse of x is gonna give us the angle. So, so this is sort of where 
sine of theta equals x. Sine inverse of the x is going to equal theta. So we're just reversing this um, process. And so this would allow us to say, if I know what the actual trig value is, in this case for sine, I can use this inverse function. So on the calculator, it will sort of run it for all of these more awkward values. This is, again, the kind of thing we're going to look at for um, more standard values. But just in terms of having a tool to do this when the numbers aren't quite so nice, um, we'll go calculator style. And I'm not totally sure how well you can see this. But my sign button is here. And you can see above it, there sort of is sign inverse. Let me see if I can get this to focus a little better. Look at that. So the sign button is here. The inverse is just above it. And so what you're going to do if you have a calculator like this is you'll use this um, shift key, right? The shift key here is, is yellow, which means it's going to do the yellow functions. Um, some of these buttons also have a third function. You can see some of these red letters, which is the alpha key. Um, so what we're trying to find, so we'll do shift, do sign inverse. Um, we're doing this from a degrees perspective, so, so we're going to get an angle that's in degrees. Um, this was 0 0.67. And so if I do the sine inverse, this is going to tell me 42.067 degrees. So we'll call that 42.1 degrees. So sine inverse, 0 0.67 gave us 42.1 degrees. Um, again, if you did this from a radians perspective, then you would get a radians angle out of it. Obviously, that would be a smaller number, so it would be a little bit of an indication if you've got some sort of small value. Out of here, if you're in the you know tens, hundreds uh, kind of size, you're probably in degrees mode. Most of your um, calculators and stuff will have all these things laid out. Um, just to sort of show you briefly, if you have phone calculator um, to get to these buttons, so the scientific calculator is best, but if you flip it to the side, <clears throat> if you flip it to the side, um, you can see you get sine, cosine, and tangent. These uh, sine h, cosine h, tangent h are, are something different. Um, you can see this sort of uh, RADs is for radians. So if I hit the DEG at the bottom, that means we're in degrees. That's kind of the default. Your phone will sort of tell you if you're in radians, because in theory that's a little more unusual um, for most people. Um, and then there's the RAD button there if you want to go into radians. If you hit DEG to go back to degrees, then it doesn't say anything. Um, if you need to get to the inverse functions, so uh, the standard one, right, if we wanted to do sine of 30 degrees, you do 30, you would do sine, you would get 0.5. Um, if you want to do an inverse, you use this like a second key, which is like a shift key. And you can see you get inverse, inverse, inverse. Um, so I just said the sine of 30 degrees is 0.5. So if I put in 0.5 and I do sine inverse, it's going to take me back to 30 degrees. So it's possible to do this on your phone. It's much more clunky than if you have a scientific calculator or a grapher. Um, so I would always suggest using that, but in a pinch, it's, it's possible to do this on the phone or if you have a, a better calculator app or something. Um, so we can use those tools to help us um, find some values in a triangle um, in either sort of more of a story problem kind of setup or if you just have more of a generic geometry type problem. So there you go.